Welcome to the Back to Space News Flash. I'm Danielle Dallas Russa, and today we are going to be announcing the winner of last week's giveaway. Thank you for leaving the comments and subscribing. I'll announce that shortly. And stay tuned to the end of the video because we have a, another giveaway, but this time it is a signed autographed photo of Charlie Duke. And the winner of someone who left a comment and also subscribes to the channel is Matt Thompson. Way to go, Matt Thompson. You won a signed autographed photo of Apollo 7 astronaut Walt Cunningham. We will message you directly and get that all taken care of so you can hang this in your office, your kitchen, so everyone knows you're cool. Let's get started for this week's news. NASA highlights women on the moon with new Artemis program art. Again, Artemis is an ongoing crewed space flight program carried out by NASA, as we know, with the goal of landing the first woman and the next man on the moon, specifically at the lunar south pole region by 2024. This Artemis logo looks a lot like the Apollo mission logo, but this time it's the goddess of the moon and you can see her name is Artemis. Quote, you can see Artemis here. Maybe it looks like she is in a space helmet. It looks like her hair is coming around the corner here. That that actually could be a rocket trajectory. And of course, that rocket trajectory could be heading off to the moon itself. There are a lot of different ways to interpret this. I just think it's magnificent. Artemis's face is purposely abstract so all women can see themselves in her. Quick update on the NASA Mars Mall. It is moving. They're making progress. As you can recall from last week, the itty bitty mall had dug two inches. Well, guess what guys? It is digging. Just keep digging. Just keep digging. What do we do? We dig, dig. The NASA Insight tweeted that because of course I had time to do that on the Martian surface, but that this might be the last time we see the mole. This really is an amazing testament to the ingenuity at NASA. They had to go through a lot to get this working, and I'm happy that it is. Speaking of tweets, Elon Musk sent a tweet from space. While SpaceX is casually making plans to just take over everything about space, they're also pushing to take over the night sky with 30,000 Starlink satellites. So, as a little bit of a background, back in May, SpaceX launched its initial batch of 60 Starlink satellites to start testing a broadband service. The company aims to bring satellite broadband to customers around the globe, and last Tuesday's tweet suggested that it's on that track. Elon Musk used a Starlink terminal at his house to send the tweet. His first tweet said, sending this tweet through space via Starlink satellite. And then his second tweet came just two minutes later saying, whoa, it worked. SpaceX hopes to offer Starlink broadband services to the US and Canada by mid 2020. That'll require six to eight Starlink launches with 24 needed for global coverage. This is great because as we all know, the streaming war is upon us. And so we're gonna need to make sure we have as much broadband as possible. And you know, maybe they could do their own streaming. The space streaming service, only $5.99 a month. Charlie Duke makes headlines this week as he started a business to send messages into space. So as we all know, Charlie Duke was on Apollo 16 and he's a moonwalker and he brought a photo of him and his family and left it on the lunar surface. This is the only kind of littering that I approve of. Quote, it was my desire to make my family part of the mission. So this was my way of taking them with me and recognizing the role that they have played in my life. That's so sweet. So now he has created Astrogram that enables anyone anywhere in the world to inscribe a custom made plaque which will be sent into space. Aside from sending their message to orbit, customers will also receive a certificate of purchase, a welcome letter from Charlie Duke, full details on the launch, including the mission and when the rocket is going to be prepared, the ability to live stream to the launch. Those interested in sending their own personalized message into space can do so on Astrogram's website where it's about starting at $99. In other news, there has been a UFO sighting. Oh wait, that's actually just China's new super great white shark stealth helicopter. The Chinese said that the armed helicopter was designed for the future digital information battlefield. The super great white shark is 7.6 meters, 25 feet long, almost three meters high, 10 feet, and has room on board for two crew. Schematic drawings show its outer shell covers rotors and engines, which would presumably give the helicopter stealth capability because any sharp angles would be covered, making it harder for radar to detect. 
Virgin Galactic went public last Monday, so that means the private space tourism company is about to not be private anymore. Shareholders approved Virgin Galactic's merger with one of Chamath Palihapitiya's ventures. Following the merger's close, Sir Richard Branson's space tourism company will list directly on the New York Stock Exchange on Monday. After closing, shares will trade under ticketer symbol SPCE one letter away from space. As we reported last week, we showed the super cool spacesuits. That's what the passengers will wear on the $250,000 space tour, which will begin in the first half of next year if the company sticks to its most recent public timeline. As we just said, its spacecraft can host up to six paying passengers, meaning each flight could earn the company up to 1.5 million in revenue. That's some serious sweet cash. Virgin Galactic says it has more than 600 people already in the queue to take the trip. Take me! I don't got the money, but I got the spirit, and I'd be great! The past. On October 27th, 1961, NASA launched the first test flight of its new Saturn I space launch vehicle. The Saturn I was the United States' first heavy lift rocket designed to launch big payloads beyond low Earth orbit. This was also the first test flight of any of the rockets in the Saturn family of rockets, which includes the Saturn V, and Saturn V is the one that you know, we used to launch astronauts to the moon in the Apollo program, so it's kind of important. Saturn 1 was enormous compared to every rocket that came before it. It was almost three times as tall as the Jupiter C rocket, which launched the first American satellite into orbit in 1958. It also produced more than 10 times the amount of thrust that the Jupiter C rocket could. The liquid powered rocket launched on its maiden voyage from Cape Canaveral. Despite a one hour weather delay, the flight was nearly perfect. Nice little trip. It reached an altitude of 85 miles and splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean 15 minutes later. The only thing that went wrong was that the engines cut off at 1.6 seconds early, but that wasn't a huge deal. Scientists figured out that this happened because there was too much liquid oxygen in the rocket and not enough propellant. You gotta say, throughout all of the history of NASA, they have done a great job of continually building off of their past um, inventions. So innovation has been really cool and it's really exciting what we're about to do in the 20s. The future. China has now entered the space race. A private company called iSpace is planning to launch a rocket with a reusable booster in 2021. This rocket is called Hyperbola 2. i-space is not iSpace. They're very different people. The Hyperbola 2 will be China's first reusable rocket and if that's not enough, iSpace says, I keep on wanting to say MySpace, iSpace says that they intend to also develop a reusable suborbital space plane for tourism. Man, they are really getting in there. Space race is on. Israel announces its plan for the second attempt at a lunar landing, but this time they're gonna stick the landing. So as a little background, Israel had hoped to become the fourth country to land softly on the moon, and they tried but it wasn't the best outcome. The Beersheet mission attempted its landing in April, but a computer glitch late in the process meant the spacecraft didn't slow down properly during its descent. Six months later, a representative of Israel's government-owned aerospace manufacturer gave a recap of what went wrong in an introduction to what Israel hopes to do next on the moon. Despite the hard landing, Israel has no intent to stop chasing the moon. The successor spacecraft would include some design tweaks meant to increase the mission's odds of landing safely. New versions will carry upgraded computers and unlike the original spacecraft, will be armed with an obstacle avoidance system for landing. I feel like that probably should have been included in the first one, but you live and you learn. But Israel's future landers will still be compact and still work with rideshare launches. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this week we are giving away a very unique Apollo 16 Moonwalker astronaut Charlie Duke signed photo. Charlie Duke is an incredibly special person. Not only are his accolades, they speak for themselves, but also he works very heavily in the back to space community. He works with our student ambassadors. He's amazing. So it's a real honor to have this photo. In order to get it, make sure that you are a subscriber of the back to space channel. You leave a comment on this video and you will be entered to win. It'll be announced next week. Oh, and I'm going to Mexico. <laughs> 
So um, I will not be filming on Saturday and Sunday. I will be filming on Thursday. So if you want to enter to win, make sure you do it by Thursday morning. This week's episode is sponsored by Universe Today. They were nice enough to reach out and collaborate with us. I just shot a video that they will put up on their channel, and I'd love for you guys to go check out their Instagram page at Universe Today and visit their website at universetoday.com. They're putting out a ton of space news. They're amazing, and it's a really friendly company, and that's always really important. The Back to Space Student Ambassador of the Week is Anna. Anna interned at NASA this summer through the STEM Enhancement in Earth Science program. She worked with a team to design a satellite, and she even designed her own satellite experiment to observe Steve. Anna loves geography, maps, and learning about other cultures. She knows every single world capital. That is really impressive. Anna is a strong advocate for gender equality, and this year she founded a nonpartisan organization to encourage young girls to pursue political careers. Anna plays both the violin and the clarinet and is the concert master of her school's orchestra. She's got it going on! And that's it for this week's Back to Space News Flash. Thanks everyone so much for watching the Back to Space News Flash this week. Why don't you guys leave a comment? What is your favorite fact about Charlie Duke? Make sure that you're a subscriber, turn on the notifications so you don't miss one of these, so you can be cool in your conversations and know about space. And um, we'll catch you next week.